the time is now. Let everyone in the listening audience grab their scriptures, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Listen and learn the true meaning of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible, the Psalms of David, the Lost Books, and the Holy Quran. There are no more secrets. All false things will perish. So come and learn the undisputable teachings of the only man that has the answers to the problems of a troubled world, as Sayyid al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al mahdi It's important that people understand the meaning of Islam. What is Islam? What is the religion of Islam? And what purpose does it have with our people today? First and foremost is understand that the so-called pale Arab has no intention of you ever learning what Al-Islam means. They want to give you the impression by spreading it through so-called Sunni Muslims in America and other different sects of Islam in the West that Islam was a religion founded by a man named Muhammad in the year 570. And this is wrong. They want to make you think that Islam is an, a so-called Arab religion and that different people such as the African people and the Indian people converted to it upon its spread from Arabia over into Africa by way of a sword. This also is untrue. They want to convince you that African people have no place in Deen al-Islam because the Arabs, as they call them, were the slave traders. This is also an untruth. The word al-Islam does not mean submission to the will of God. The word al-Islam means a state of tranquility or peace. It comes from the word salama, peaceful. The prophet Isa ibn Maryam al-Masih, which you know as Jesus, son of Mary the Messiah, made a statement in the Bible, bless other peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God, as they translate it. He was saying, Bless other peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Allah. Why do I say that Jesus said Allah? Because Jesus A did not ever speak English, nor Latin, nor Greek. The three most prominent languages that his doctrine had been translated into. Jesus spoke Arabic, Hebrew, and Aramic, which are dialects of the same ancient language, Syriac Arabic, from where Abraham, we know as Ibrahim, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born. So when Jesus made a statement, blessed are the peacemakers, the word salam in Arabic or shalom in Hebrew, which are both dialects of the same language, when he said blessed are the shalom or salam, peacemakers, he added the prefix mu. The prefix mu is one who is something, or like for instance the word alam means knowledge or know. Mu'allam means one who has knowledge or one who knows, or one who's of knowledge or a teacher. So when they say the word salam, peace, when someone adds the word mu on the beginning of it, it becomes muslam and means one who is of peace or a peacemaker. So when the Messiah, Jesus, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, made a peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Bless other peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Allah. He was saying, indeed, Bless all the Muslims, for they shall be called the children of Allah. Make note that when the Messiah, Jesus, the Savior to the world of Israel at the time was speaking, he said, shall be. He used the word sulfur, shall be or will be, a future tense. Now, it is important to note that he was standing in the midst of his followers in what's referred to as a present tense. He was with them, but he was not talking to them. He was talking about some people that would be called peacemakers. I put the question to the Christians many times, where in your doctrine have any of you or your preachers claimed the name peacemaker? When have you taken on the title peacemaker? There's only one religious group of people who came after Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the Messiah, alayhi salatu wa salam, who referred to themselves as people of peace, and that is Muslim. So the word Muslim means one who is of peace or a peacemaker. The word Islam means a state of peace. Islam is not a religion. Islam is a way of life. It has religious practices in it. For instance, in Islam, we learn principles on washing, how to eat, how to dress, which extend further in the fundamentals of religion, step right into our everyday living, day-to-day -day participation in trying to get back to the garden in Eden, or Jannatul Fi Eden. So whenever you see a person who is a Muslim, who are claiming to be a Muslim, they, must, they are people that should be of peace. This does not mean that Muslims don't argue. This does not mean that Muslims don't end up in fights. But to say, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, and put in a future tense is a proclamation by Jesus the Messiah to the world that in the future there will be a group of people who will refer to themselves as peacemakers or ones who are of peace and those people, not you disciples sitting here of his congregation, but those people in the future, they will become binatullah or the sons and daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The purpose Islam has in the West is the resurrection, the, re the reawakening of our people to their true way of life, the religion of the prophet Abraham, to which Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, and David, and all of the other prophets followed. Abraham of the Bible is the man who set the platform for the religious practices that all of these so-called denominations cling to. You are Abraham's descendants. You are a lost tribe. You were taken out of Nubia. You were not taken out of Niger. 
You were not taken out of the western parts of Africa, transported over to the eastern parts, and sold to the Arabs. When they speak of the Arab trade, there's a certain confession in there. Because they speak about the language Kiswahili or Swahili, and Kiswahili or Swahili is a combination of Arabic and Bantu, which was to the east coast of Africa, around where Habashia, Ethiopia, Sudan, Somali, and the countries of the eastern part of Africa, not of the west coast. And knowing the map of Africa and the size of Africa, you'll know the journey from the west to the east. If the slaves are the slave traders and not the Portuguese, then you were being traded by people who were Arabic-speaking people from the east coast of Africa. If you were being traded from the east coast of Africa, then you must have resided in the east coast of Africa. <laughs> you see? So, therefore, you are the original Sudanese. And Ethiopian, Sudanese, and Somali are all the same people. They have been deceived in the thinking they're as different as the Jamaicans, the Americans, and the Trinidadians think that they're different and they're all the same seed Abraham. You understand? So the slave trade took place from the east coast of Africa. You people are Nubians. The white man, as he's called, the devil, spends great amounts of time and effort trying to make you believe that you did not do something that he cannot figure out, which was build the pyramid. Even though you've forgotten too, he's done, he's, but he has taken away from you your great past, that you are the descendants of Abraham and you migrated into Africa under the name of Cush, Nuba, and Mizraim, and set up the east coast of Africa, Egypt, Sudan, and I'm not talking about the whites in Egypt now who are not Egyptians but Greeks. I'm not talking about the mixed Sudanese now who are not Sudanese but a combination of those Greeks who migrated south and took certain parts of uh, Africa. You are from three major tribes there sitting in that room. You are from the tribe of Sharia, the tribe of Jalia, and the tribe of Dongolawe. A combination of these tribes produced your many features, your many skin tones, and your many hues of color as well as hair texture. From extremely kinky and curly to wavy and almost straight. All of those are your characteristics as the real and true Arab. You are the descendants from Israel and descendants from Ismail. You are the descendants of Ibrahim. And your true way of life is Al-Islam. You are the peacemakers that Jesus, the Messiah, alayhi salatu wasalam, spoke about when he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of Allah. And the man who was to reform by way of his warnings to the truth called the Quran, Kitab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Qur'an was the comforter. And he was mentioned in St. John as one that would come after Jesus and be endowed with the Holy Spirit. And when he came, he should not speak of himself. Only that which he hears shall he speak. And he shall glorify Jesus' name. No angel have glorified Jesus' name. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has glorified the name of Jesus the Messiah. Now you all may proceed on with your questions. Now that we have a foundation of who you are, where you are, and why we are beginning to gather in the last days under the new covenant of Mila Ibrahim Al Hanifan Alaihi Salatu Wasalam. In the book of Acts. Chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. It mentions about Philip and an Ethiopian eunuch. 
tells us that Philip was preaching the words of Christ and that an angel told Philip to go down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert. When Philip went down there, he saw an Ethiopian eunuch and he heard, he heard this eunuch read the scriptures about which the angel told him to speak about. Philip asked the eunuch, do you understand what you read? And the eunuch asked him and said, how can I accept some man should guide me. Question. What is a eunuch and what does this story mean? Okay, first of all, a portion was left out. And that portion is that this Philip was a high officer in the ranks of the queen in Ethiopia at the time. And also, that when the angel, who they refer to here as the Holy Spirit, approached him, he was in a carriage, right reading from the scriptures of the book of Isaiah, specifically. You have your Bible? Yes, I have. Could you open to it? When you get down to about 31 of it, you'll find that this official cross between the Holy Spirit, the angel, and then the official who was confronting Philip. Right? And he wanted to know, how would he be able to explain or understand something therewith he was invited to come and sit in this carriage with Philip whereupon Philip would begin to read from the passages of the scripture and this is what he read like a sheep that is taken to the slaughter correct? Right. like a lamb that maketh no sound when his wool is cut off, he did not say a word. Right. He was humiliated and justice was denied him. No one will be able to tell him about his descendants because his life on earth has come to an end. Now, the official asked Philip, tell me, of whom is this prophet saying this? This is what the scripture reads. Of himself or of someone else. Then Philip began to speak. Starting from this passage of the scripture, he told him the good news about the Messiah, Jesus. Right? Right. As they traveled down the road in the carriage, they came to a place where there was some water. And the official said, here is some water. What is to keep me from being baptized? You got it? I'm listening. The official ordered the carriage to stop, and both Philip and the official went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When he came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord took Philip away. The official did not see him ever again, but continued on now full of joy. He had been saved as he have it. Philip found himself in Azores. He went on to Sarasius and on the way he preached the good news. The experience is the question that Philip who had been a disciple of the disciples of Asa and Miriam right, and a reader of the make note the book of Isaiah, not the New Testament, because the New Testament wasn't collected yet, <laughs> came across an official who was of the queen of Ethiopia and converted him to Islam and told him, like a sheep, when he is shared, he has no questions. When you give up all of this glory and this power, you don't question. Or like a lamb, who is, uh, like a sheep who is sacrificed, who has to give up everything he believes, 
or like a lamb who is shed of his robes, of his garment, he makes not a word, because his final abode is in the house of the Lord. He no longer speaks of his descendancy and where he came from, but he becomes a servant of the Most High. With this conversion in this carriage, this official was ready for his, what they refer to as shahada or baptism, you see? And Philip indeed baptized him upon which the angel came and collected Philip and he went on preaching. That's what the story is about. I want to know what is a eunuch? Oh, I'm sorry. A eunuch is a servant who works in the official of a queen and the king is in question of whether or not this, this man would, would be able to be seduced like Joseph or to seduce someone so he is uh, castrated. He has his sexual organs removed so he, would, so he can work in the palace amongst uh, the queen and the female and they have no fear of sexual problems. So he's referred to as a eunuch. He has his sexual organs removed. To follow up on what you just mentioned. Yes, sir. The reason why I use Acts and a eunuch and Philip in your publication, in your articles, you mentioned that, I think it was about 1985 or 84 or 86, in one of your publications, you mentioned that Master Farad Muhammad was an imposter. Could you? Tell me, what does an imposter mean, and what is the purpose of being an imposter? Sure. I said, and I repeat, in several pamphlets, that during the time of Honorable Elijah Muhammad coming into the light, prior to him, an Arab came, and his name was Abdul Wali Farad Muhammad. And he also taught or was teaching part of the congregation of one Sharif, Ju Ali, or Noble Ju Ali, who derived his direction while residing in Morocco for a period of time and referred to his followers as Mobites, Canaanites, etc. This Arab came on the scene and started teaching the Arabic language. This caused a decline in the power of Noble Juali, a split. One of the people in the ranks of Noble Juali was a man named Kareem and a man named Kareem Allah. These two brothers are socialized. One of them was Elijah Muhammad. Master Farad Muhammad caused so much confusion that he was put in prison, the real one, beaten and imprisoned by the devil here, upon which they made a likeness of him with another man named Dodd, or Wallace Dodd Ford. And they put him and eliminated the real Arab by taking his life and put the other one in prison, whom Honorable Elijah Muhammad came to visit a couple of times. And then when he was released into the street and went to a different place, Detroit, thought that this man was the Farad that was teaching in New Jersey, the trial in, in the, amongst those people called the Canaanites or Mobites of Noble Jali, and indeed it wasn't. You follow? But he had taken the lesson that the original Abdul Wali Farad had when he was put in, when he, when he was incarcerated, and they took those lessons, removed the questions from them, the answers from them, I'm sorry, took the answers from them, and he presented those to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who in his own being born with a special gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was able to raise the nation anyway. Their approach was to try to bring about a thing that would destroy the minds of black people in that day and time, so they bred certain groups under the name Fard. A man named Reza Fard from Tarzan Russell founded the Jehovah Witness Movement. This was during the reign of the Ford Foundation. It just had a whole series on television about this man, Mr. Ford. He gave birth to these organizations because he was linked with the Nazi party, and his attempt was to pull down the black man in the Western Hemisphere. They know your potential. But Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Allah be pleased with him, was such a powerful man within himself that he turned bad into good. 
and still raise the nation of Islam. You follow? So the imposter did not affect the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who gave the kindly garden knowledge to the people to prepare them for this great graduation in this day and time of Al Haq Al Islam Middle Quran. Why? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Allah be very pleased with him, didn't attempt to teach his followers Arabic or the Arabic Quran, but he used the Bible and he used those lessons. And that was to clean the people up, to prepare them, to get them upright and ready for this great day and time when they would then be able to combine that doctrine that he gave them and that discipline that was so well put together through the FOI and the MGT and the GCC and put that in Haqqal Islam, which we're teaching now at Ansar Allah, the combination of the two would have made these supreme beings out of these ex-slaves, which, which he referred to as Lazarus, people who would sit and eat the crumbs from the slave master's table. The combination of the Ansar Allah doctrine and the discipline and the, and the loyalty of the nation of Islam together would have turned our people from human beings in the supreme being, but the devil had his own plan. And you know what that was. He sent a lot of innovators in and turned them against the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and started talking about his marital life and how many wives he had and forgot that as a Muslim he can have up to four wives if he wants to. And that he did not have to comply to the Christian church's way of marriage to get these four wives as a Muslim, you see. And nowhere in the world, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad intended for people not to know he had that many children because you can't hide children. <laughs> you cannot hide and they'll grow into people. So eventually he knew that people would know how many children he had. You follow? But the devil who was working with people who were calling themselves Muslim but had Christian mentalities with this monogamy, and they started throwing things at the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to shake his better minister at the time, Malcolm X was. This is how the devil works. If we read in the Bible, the second Psalm, we're going to see how the devil works against a man of the stature like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Why do people make their useless plots, their king revolt? Their rulers plot together against the Lord and against the Lord's host. Why do these people come together and scheme against the Lord and his children? That's what it's saying. I'm reading from a translation for you. Let us free ourselves from their rule. Say, let us throw down off of their control. Meaning, let us break their bonds asunder. Let us free ourselves from the rule of this devil. From his throne in heaven, the Lord laughs and mocks their feeble plan. The Almighty from heaven looked at the devil and he laughed at them in their little silly trick. Then he warned them in anger. And he's warning them now through the plague and the earthquake. Like the Quran says, Zazil. He's warning them now. Then he warns them in anger and terrifies them with his fury. He shows them his power. O Zion, or Jerusalem, the new city, my sacred hill, he says, I have instilled my king. This case is David. I will announce, say, the king. What the Lord has declared, the king will tell the world, Dao through his song, what the Lord has declared. He said to me, ye are my son. Today I have become your father. This is when David became anointed. It's the same statement they have in the New Testament when it says, this day have I begotten thee. Ask and I will give thee all the nations. The whole earth will be yours. Now, you will break them with an iron rod and you will shatter them into pieces like the clay of a pot. That's from the Arabic translation. 
This quote is talking about how the devil comes together and schemes and plots to try to bring down a David who rose up a simple man in Israel and became the greatest king they ever knew. Mm -hmm. The same thing they did. They saw the honor of Muhammad. A simple man rose up in the West, became the greatest black man America ever knew. And the devil schemed and plotted. He used our own people against us. He used black people in the nation of Islam to slander and gossip against him. He used relatives to backbite and fabricate lies because of the love of money. The hearts of many are waxed cold. You see that? So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was brought down to look bad in the eyes of black children because the devil planned it that way. And it's up to you and I to bring it back to light, to bring his name back out, and to establish that name in the minds of our children as one of the forerunners like Abraham. The children of Israel today are so caught up on Moses, they forget that Moses came from Abraham. The Muslims are so caught up on Muhammad that they forget that Muhammad's teachings came from Abraham. Today, people are so caught up on some of the people who were leaders who extracted themselves from the honor of Elijah Muhammad, they're now taking all the glory and the power that they forgot to use the name of Elijah Muhammad in what they're doing. You follow? So I don't have anything bad to say about Honor Elijah Muhammad. You won't find that here. I do have disagreements with a lot of those people that succeeded him and their opinions of what he was teaching and how they perverted his teaching and how the government stepped in and corrupted everything. But I know that Kushifi Yad Allah, that everything is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. And the truth will be made manifest in time. It always is. Okay. I don't have any questions. Um, I'd like to just let everybody know that um, as growing up as a child, I've been um, through a lot in my life. And um, I never really had a family, you know, like father, mother, um, a togetherness family. And I moved from place to place. And I always felt that there was, there was always something like behind me, um, pushing me. And the thing that I was running from, whatever I was running from, I, I realized eventually that it was something that I was running to. And I never really had a place to call home. And I just want to thank Allah from my heart that I am grateful that he has sent you as a teacher. And I truly believe this day that finally I realized that I am where I belong and that I'm in the right place in the right time. And finally, I don't feel lost anymore because society out there and the things that are in the society that Satan has put there has really thrown me around. And people, other people would, you know, say, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. And I started to think that I was crazy because I wasn't doing what they're doing out there. And thanks to Allah, I have, one day, I, I had knowledge within me, even in my heart. And um, he has placed people in my life. And I, I've made a, t a big turnaround. And I am soon willing to accept my, um, my garb, my veil. One day, I had listened to a tape that a brother had um, given me. And that just opened up everything. And from that point on, I was, listen, I was even, even more eager to listen and to read. And I just want to say that I'm very grateful to Allah that he has, he has sent you. And I am going to be willing to accept this life, the life that I'm supposed to be leading in Islam, and that I am going to try my best, my very best, in any way that I know I can help. That's all I have to say.
Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to say that the family just has their arms open waiting to receive any brothers and sisters who can find their way home. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shelah come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Hey, my question is, the scepter, I don't understand what, what that word means in its verse. Let me, let me give it to you. The I'm scepter is yes. another word for the staff, and the staff was a covenant of prophethood during that time. Whoever held the, ste the scepter like Moses did, that staff that Moses had, yes. he held the leadership over the tribes of Israel. And they said in this quote, the tribes of Israel, and they said in this quote, that it's not going to pass. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let, let, let me hear what you have to say. And until Sheila come. Now, I don't she want to... Sheila yeah. yes. is the same thing. And when we say, it's another word of the Amharic, Semitic word, Shala, from Shalom, the same word. One who's of peace or the Salaha. They say, we say Sad and they say Shah in Hebrew. So they use Shala for Salaha, a perfectionist. Again, like they once said Salah, they just, that was because by the time they got to Psalms, they were speaking in another dialect where David was at. The Shiloh is Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad. That was his name. Okay, go ahead. All right, thank you. That's all I want to know. Thank you. Uh, you cleared that up for me. Thank you. No. Right. Tell the brother, if he wants an in-depth understanding of it, I did a book on, called the Book of St. John, Chapter 1, and I explained the whole thing in detail in there. During my early age of childhood, you know, we experienced a, a severe fire in our house. And my mother told me that, uh, you know, I think I was like about five or six at the time. Everyone had ran out the house and, and my uh, baby sister, she was, you know, the youngest one at the time, about a uh, couple of months old. Uh, everyone ran out the house and she was in there. So she said that I went back into the house and I didn't, I stayed in there until, you know, some people had came in and, and got us all out. And I can, I, you know, I was wondering, could you explain why can't I remember something like this? You know, I have no, no recollections of this uh, thing taking place, you know? Because you've dreamt it out. See, what, the, what people don't realize is that dreams mm -hmm. are made to, let's say, to surge the soul of things that would poison it. That's why you have nightmares and you have sensations and you have joy and you have hate. You have all the emotions that one feels on a physical plane while he's dreaming. So what happened is certain incidents that affect us in our childhood, they bother us to such a degree that over a period of time, we have dreamt them out of our subconscious mind. And it's very difficult for us to recollect them unless someone puts us in a state of hypnosis and takes us directly into that file cabinet. And then they can bring that incident up. But sometimes the trauma of the incident can affect the body. So it may be best to leave it alone. I see. Now, just recently, you know, my wife is... Uh uh, presently, she's like three months pregnant, you know, and, you know, I had a dream, like, I saw, like, the baby's face, you know, I had the, and the uh, description. That's not it. a dream, then, that's a vision. And my blessing for the baby, that means blessing. But that's not a dream. If you see a face, it's a vision. You see, and the same thing, like, you know, one of the ladies on my job, right, uh, she never met my wife or anything, and she, she came and she told me that she had a, a vision, as well as you put it, of a baby too, you know what I mean? Had the, the face, he described the face and everything. And I was wondering. Let me explain something to you. Yes. In the books of Corinthians, all right, mm -hmm. in the 12th chapter, when they start to speak about the gifts. I'm sorry, is that 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when they start speaking about the different gifts that certain men have, all right, mm -hmm. one of those gifts is In number eight, let's start from eight. Okay. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. Stop there. People are born with the Spirit of prophecy in them. Mm -hmm. Certain people have the gift of prophecy that does not make them prophets. Right. Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, was the seal of the prophets, to be no wrong. But men have prophetic ability in them. 
Yabba. Right. Don't be alarmed by these divine attributes that are inside you. You know why? Because what does Genesis say? That the Almighty did what? Send down the sons of Genesis Lord. chapter 1, when he created man, he said he breathed into man right. the breath of life, and man did what? Became a living soul. Let us make man in our image. So man has the spirit of the Most High in him. The Quran confirms that Allah put man, his spirit in man, and man became a living soul. So with the spirit of the Almighty moving in you, the ruh moving inside your nafs, is, the ruh is the soul, and nafs is the spirit, with it moving inside you, you do have the gifts of prophecy at times. Don't be alarmed. You can foresee things that's going to happen. Everybody has it. Don't space it out, because you get lost. It's very simple. We all have the gifts. These are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it's just it's the ignorant people sometimes you have to tell them and they think you're crazy because they don't, they don't have the gift. Yeah, I always felt like, you know, not like an outcast, but, you know, when I was coming up and I used to hang out with my partners or what have you, and, you know, I, I always felt uh, a cast aside or something, you know. I always felt different. You know. Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> well, and especially when we become Muslim. <laughs> then we are different to our families, our friends. Yes. Blessed is he who is persecuted after righteous name's sake. Rasulullah Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, when he started teaching Tahid in Mecca, what happened? As long as they were worshipping rocks and marbles and stones and all kind of stupid things, they liked him. But as soon as he started teaching about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah. then they started disliking him. Slander. And what did Jesus say about that? He said, a prophet is without honor in his own house. When he went back to Nazareth and was amongst his own people trying to, and he walked into the synagogue and started teaching. But the problem was not the fact that he went to the synagogue teaching. The problem was that he wasn't Levi. He wasn't of the Levite tribe and didn't have the right to go into the synagogue and read the Torah. His disciples make it look like he was doing the right thing. He didn't have the right to go into it because it's just like a brother from there getting up and telling the brother who's teaching class, move out the way, I'm going to teach. The congregation there might start throwing rocks at him or stone him in the old days. You follow? Yeah. That's what it's about. Don't be afraid to get the prophecy. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum. Imam Issa. In your pamphlet, What and Where is Hell? You say the devil will be trapped in the hexagram. And you show an illustration on page 61 of him being trapped. Now when I look at the six-pointed star, I see 12 triangles in it. The devil is trapped in the center, surrounded by six triangles, and they seem to resemble pyramids. Does it mean that Azazel will be trapped at a certain location and that it'll be shaped like a hexagram and be surrounded by six pyramids that will have a magnetic force field emanating from it that will keep him trapped. That's close. But what it means is that his number is six. In Revelations chapter 13, they give you the number of the beast being six score, three and six. So he is attracted by his own number. The way black people are attracted by the number seven. They always, all through their history, they've always said, children born the seventh child has the seventh barrel, the seventh fifth, the seventh death. <laughs> the father the devil is attracted by the six. Many people thought June 6th of 1966 was the demise of the devil when it was really the incarnation of his Christ. <laughs> you see? And he will be trapped by the six. He's attracted to it. And that's why if you wear the symbol of Solomon on your finger, which is the seal of the ever-living, the six-pointed star crescent the brothers wear, you'll notice that they'll ask you about it. People who wear the six-pointed star crescent will tell you the devils will walk right over and say, uh, 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 this symbol, what, what is the meaning of this? Why do you have this on? Mm. You see, and then the pyramids inverted with their points going into different directions does create a magnetic force field, which will give us the power to lock him when he's in. Mm. That's how King Solomon locked him, but he got out. They call it Amadeus, by the way, which these Amorites are now propagating in a song, Amadeus. Amadeus was the beast who, who had stolen the ring of Solomon. Mm. So, we'll, 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 so when he gets trapped this time, will he be locked in there forever? According to the book of Revelation, he should be locked for a little while, and then he'll be left a thousand years to be exact. That thousand year period that the devil will be confined in a pit will be the thousand year period that the 144,000 will be in accordance to the book of Revelation chapter 21, will be in the new city and being taught by the Lamb. 
to, be, to be come back forth to the world to get those who are part of the second resurrection. Nothing to do with the nation of Islam at all. Not their first and second resurrection, but those who, are, who, who decide whether or not they'll be a part of the second death or not. So there'll be a thousand year period once the 144,000 are properly raised. Those who have not drunk the wrath and the fornications of the harlot and do not live deliciously in her, they will be taken for a thousand years to the mothership, as you know it, which is called the Crystal City in the book of Revelation chapter 21. And there they will abide for a thousand years. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got to bring a new heaven and a new earth, and he plans to destroy this one. You don't have to bring new things or you're going to remodel something. <laughs> you just remodel it with new things. But he said he's bringing a new heaven new earth because he made a promise to the rainbow way back in the prophet Noah's time where I stopped off last, if you remember, where Noah, after the fall of the angels, right, way back in Noah's time when he did that, he made a covenant that he would destroy the world by fire. 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 No longer by water, but more about fire. Mm -hmm. You're all about to do that now. Mm -hmm. But the 144,000, what about them? Y'all are holding them back. The 144,000 those little kids sitting in that class there. Your daughters and your sons that y'all are holding in the street, y'all are holding the 144,000 back. And if you hold it back, then the day, the year 2000 will pass like any other Sunday or any other Monday. Nothing will happen. The devil will be left, will be given the power to release them from the pit and will rage war on us and you will fail. The problem with Muslims is they don't realize that the Holy Quran, when it speaks about the power of us gathering together, it, uh, it's in Surah uh, Al-Nasr of the Holy Quran. The first word is either. The word either doesn't just mean when, it means if in Arabic. It says in the Holy Quran, the 110th chapter, it says, Iza ja Nasrullahi wal Fatha. Either when or if Ja Nasrullahi has come the aiders of Allah well, and the victorious opening. And then it says, Ra'ayta, and you have already seen it, Ra'ayta is an Arabic past tense. It says, Ra'ayta nasi yadakhuluna fi deen allahi afwaja. It says, and you have already seen a nas. Many Muslims say that these are the coming of the angels. It doesn't say that. It says, a nas. What do they mean? When you have already seen the people, Yadakhuluna, Dakhala, they're entering into. Now, this is the most important point I want to make here that a lot of Muslims miss. This was the last revelation to the Prophet Muhammad, the very last thing he received. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not call it Deen al Islam here. He could have, you know. But he didn't call it Deen al Islam. He called it what? Yadakhuluna fi Deen Allahi. When the people are entering into Allah's Deen, not Hadith and Sunnah and traditions and practices, not Deen al Islam. But Yadakhuluna, he perfected Deen al Islam with the birth of Rasulullah at Mantu. He says, I completed for you your Deen and called it Islam. But who named us Muslims? Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam al-Hanifan who is Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah he named us Muslim before Rasulullah was even born the Quran says and it says in the Holy Quran the second chapter of the 130th verse and anyone who tries to reject that religion Mila Ibrahim makes a fool out of himself but Muslims are doing it here's what he says wa ra'ayta nasi yadakhuluna fi deen allahi afwajan and you start to see people You'll have seen them entering into the deen of Allah. See that room there? Some of y'all are going to stay today and take your shahada. Or bear witness as the book of St. John chapter 1 calls it. You're going to be born again. You're going to become Muslim. You're going to try to start living on the sabir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the sunnah to Rasulullah. Make note that I use sunnah when I speak against Sunni so you can ask me why. Because following the sunnah of Rasulullah Muhammad meant doing the things he did the way he did it as he was giving it through the Holy Quran. Not a bunch of books collected by men after he had went to the higher life that they call hadith and now broken up into different sects. 
But something that we follow is the way Rasulullah did things according to what he found in the Holy Quran from the angel Jibreel, men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not a bunch of books written by a man named Muslim or Tilmeed or Bukhari or Shafi or Humbly. This is the works of Shaytan to take us off the Sabir Allah. I'm not saying that every hadith is wrong. I'm saying every hadith that does not match the Quran is wrong. You understand? Yes, sir. So it tells us here that you see people enter into the deen of Allah in groups. Do Arabs enter into the deen of Allah? No. No, they're born into it. Ask any Arab you know. I was born a Muslim. I didn't enter. Do angels enter into the deen of Allah? They're born into it. So now, who are the people in the world that are now entering into the deen of law? The Arabs spend more money trying to convert the Europeans. They've got money invested in Europe. They're building mosques in Europe. They ain't no masjid here. Now all of a sudden they want to put a little building in Manhattan. They spend money trying to convert them and can't. You can't change the devil. <laughs> we all know that. Can the devil be changed? No, sir. Now, now, say the answer the right way. Can the devil be changed? Not now, baby. Not now, <laughs> that means there was a time when he could be reformed. Yes, the angels tried to reform me. Bliss, you remember the story? There was a possibility, but was it successful? No. When he told you that the elders got together to try to reform the devil, they're talking about when the elders took the angels, took the bliss into their court, and tried to change him, and he couldn't help him. He still rebelled in heaven and was cast down. Okay. But said, Beh, behemdi. Rabbika, astaghfiruhu, innahu kana tawaba. Fasadda, the word fasadda is fa, so, sabah, glorify. Fasadda, the hamdi, by way of hamda. What do we say? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Watch close, listen. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now here's the word, ilhamdu. Alhamdu, ha, hamada, gratitude. Now watch what it says. Fasabba bi hamdi. You hear the word? Same word. Go learn to make your salah. Fasabba bi hamdi rabbika. And do it to your rabbika, to your sustainer, the one who nourishes and provides for us. Because he is what? And then I'm sorry. Then it says, wa The word wa and Issa, seek out his ghafar, his ghafar, his ghafar, his ghafar. He's the only one that can forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is. No man, no intercessor. No Jesus going to come down and help nobody. No Muhammad's going to intercess with nobody. Only Allah can forgive you. That's what the Quran says. فَسَبَّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَسَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ثَوَابًا Now surely he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, كَانَ is the one that Tawaba. The repentance. Didn't I just read you a little further the Torah and says that he repented him not that he had created man? He knew man had fallen into a grave sin. Well, here's your chance again. Your chance would come by way of the Nasr Allah. He mentions it in the Quran. He says, إِذَا جَنَاسُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدَخُلُونَ فِي دِينَ اللَّهِ أَفْوَجًا فَسَبَّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ ثَوَابًا نَاصِرُ اللَّهِ نَاصِرُ اللَّهِ نَاصِرُ اللَّهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُنُوا أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ نَاصِرُ اللَّهِ نَاصِرُ اللَّهِ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ You see? It's as simple as people follow the scriptures. They don't want to follow the Kaleem Allah. They want to follow, they want to follow men with big names. None of the prophets went to any university to get educated. But some guy from Egypt can come over and say, I have a degree in, a degree in, in Islamic studies. Everybody drops everything and follows them. What university did Jesus go to? No, no, no. What university did Rasulullah Muhammad go to? Alayhi salatu wa salam. No. Only prophet who was educated was Moses, and he failed with his mission. The only prophet that had an education was the prophet Musa, alayhi salatu wa salam, and he failed. Because he questioned the law subhanahu wa ta'ala at the last moment and didn't go into the land of Canaan. You have been listening to The True Light, sponsored by the original Tents of Kedar, located at 717 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York.
You are also invited to attend the Questions and Answers class every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Hall of Knowledge at 548 Park Street in Brooklyn, New York. And now, more profound than ever before, the Pamphlets of Peace, authored by the Master Teacher and Spiritual Guide, Es Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi, covering such topics as Who's Who on the Planet Earth, The Resurrection, Who Was Noble Drew Ali, Who Was Jesus' Father, Who Was Marcus Garvey, St. Paul, Disciple or Deceiver, and much, much more. Also, to aid your spiritual growth, we have a beautifully crafted hand woven prayer rug designed by Es Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi. We also have a large assortment of prayer beads, Nubian and Sufi oils, and incense. The original tents of Kidar would like for you to write or call us and let us know how the true light has changed your life. Remember, above all things, truth is truth.